Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another keto meal prep slash batch cooking video. In this video, I have a couple of brand new recipes that I've never made on my channel before, so I'm super excited to share them with you. They were all delicious. As always, I will have the recipes in the description box below, but this is another simple meal prep that anybody could do, even beginners. As always, I hope you guys find some motivation and inspiration from this meal prep. I hope you find new recipes that you and your family are going to love. But let's get in the kitchen and let's get started. So this week's meal prep is going to be started out with some banana nut keto muffins. These were so, so good. Spoiler alert. But those are all the ingredients that you're going to need. So the first thing that you see me doing is I am crushing up some nuts. So the recipe actually called for walnuts. I didn't have walnuts, so I used pecans. And the thing I love about this recipe is he measures it out in cups and grams. I actually really like that. I like measuring out my foods in grams because then you don't have to get out a bunch of measuring cups. But I did put 182 grams of blanched almond flour in there, as well as 100 grams of confectioner's sugar i just use that so nourished i get that on amazon but i'm also putting in 10 grams of baking powder and it says two to three grams of cinnamon just make sure to always reset your scale back to zero so the recipe also calls for just a pinch of salt so i just put in just a hair and then i'd like to use my whisk and i whisk all the dry ingredients together and the whisk really helps too if you don't feel like sifting your flowers because it kind of sifts it and then i put half of that pecans into that mixture as well as three eggs 80 milliliters of unsweetened vanilla almond milk and then in that bowl I just measured out 112 grams of butter and I melted the butter in the microwave and then I dumped that in there as well with the wet ingredients. We're also going to go in with 60 grams of sour cream, 8 grams of banana extract, and then 20 grams of maple syrup. I just used sugar-free pancake syrup and then four grams of vanilla extract and we are going to go in with some keto chocolate chips my brand of choice is lilies so i added some chocolate chips gave that just a little bit of a stir and then here in a second you'll see i decided that wasn't enough chocolate chips so i did add a little bit more you can never have enough chocolate y'all and then I just filled 12 cupcake liners. So it says that it makes, I, I believe it said eight large or 12 small. Holy cow, like it filled all 12 of those cupcake liners. And I just used those silicone ones because they pop right out like a dream. I baked those at 350 degrees for around 25 to 30 minutes. Mine actually took 30 minutes. Um, in my oven, but obviously all ovens are different, but look how beautiful those are. You just top the tops of them with the rest of those nuts. Again, I ended up using pecans, but oh my gosh, you guys, you have got to try this. This recipe is going to be linked in the description box. This is like the real deal when it comes to banana bread. It tastes for real, you guys. I was afraid it was going to have like an artificial banana taste. No, not at all real deal right here you guys no bananas next up we are going to be making jalapeno tuna i've made this several times on my channel i was craving some jalapeno tuna plus oscar likes to take this stuff to work but i just made a small batch um i put two cans of that tuna in a bowl and i like to add mustard to mine as well as mayonnaise and I use Dukes. Dukes is not the healthiest mayonnaise. Just throwing that out there. That's all I had at the time. And that is one cut up jalapeno, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. The jalapeno, by the way, I did devein it and take the seeds out because otherwise it would be super hot. And I like to add everything but the bagel seasoning to mine. That makes it so, so good. Another thing that makes tuna salad really good, in my opinion, is to add a little bit of sour cream. But you know what? I didn't this time that is the end result 
Either way, it was still delicious. Jalapenos make tuna salad so good. Again, if you have the chance, try sour cream in there as well. Total game changer. It tastes so good. Next up, I'm going to be making some shrimp fried rice. I have been craving shrimp fried rice like mad. I don't know what my deal is, but I have been wanting it so, so much. So that is all the ingredients that I'm going to use. If you guys haven't made keto shrimp fried rice, so obviously we're using cauliflower rice, you should try it because it's so simple. I just take several of those jumbo shrimps, and obviously we're going to have to clean those up and take the tails and stuff off of them. And then the mushrooms were already cut up, but I like to soak mine in vinegar water because I like to try to get all of the bacteria off of it. And once everything was soaked and everything was cleaned, I went ahead and cut up that green pepper and that mushroom. I know that's not like your typical vegetables that you would put in um, fried rice, but that is what I like to use. I like to mix mine up. I use all kinds of different stuff. But I did put in there three tablespoons of sesame oil in my personal opinion, sesame oil is seriously what makes the fried rice taste. I added a tablespoon of garlic and then I did add those mushrooms and green peppers so that way they could saute in that sesame oil and kind of soften up the vegetables. All three bags of that cauliflower rice, I did already kind of pre-cook them in the microwave. I showed you that a little bit earlier, but after they're done in the microwave, in my opinion, they don't get soft enough. So I like to saute the cauliflower rice with all the vegetables in the oil and the garlic. So that way all of the vegetables soften up. While the vegetables are softening up in that pan, I like to go back and clean up all my shrimp, take off the rest of the shells, take off the tail, and just make sure they're nice and clean. And then I like to continue to stir the vegetables while they are cooking so that way they cook evenly and like I said, I, I don't like it when the vegetables have a crunch to them, not in this dish. But in a separate pan, I went ahead and I scrambled four eggs. I love eggs in my fried rice. You can skip this part if you don't like fried um, eggs in your fried rice, but I personally like it. I also added some garlic powder, a little bit of pepper, and I don't put salt because I do put the Bragg's liquid aminos in there, which that has a, quite a bit of sodium in it in itself. You really don't need salt when you're adding that. And then I just mixed it up, added the shrimp in there, and then I always do a little taste test to make sure that I have enough um, of the Bragg's liquid aminos and make sure I can really taste the sesame seed oil because like I said, that just gives the fried rice, the authentic fried rice taste. That is the finished product. I do want to mention that if you don't like it that liquidy, you can strain off your cauliflower rice. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Today I was feeling lazy, so I did not, but you can definitely strain off that cauliflower rice so that way it's not liquidy, but oh my gosh, so delicious, and it takes that Chinese food craving away. Next up, I am going to be making just a simple, simple dish. I'm gonna prepare these Brussels sprouts in an air fryer. So easy, it is two pounds of Brussels sprouts. So I did go ahead and rinse those off in water and vinegar. Again, I like to do that because they say that the vinegar helps get the bacteria off of the vegetables. I like to make sure that I mention that because I've been getting that question a lot. So that is why I soak my vegetables in vinegar water. The air fryer I am using actually has a discount code for 40% off if you guys are interested. I will leave that in the description box below. But as you can see, half of the Brussels sprouts I put into a bag. I'm, I'm going to actually freeze those because I don't need two pounds of Brussels sprouts. And I added one tablespoon of garlic, two tablespoons of avocado oil. I do love my seasoning, so I added just a little bit of salt. And then I'm also going to go in with pepper. I just kept my seasoning simple. There is not a darn thing wrong with keeping meal prep simple, y'all, because we don't always have the time to go into these fancy, fancy meal preps. But I went ahead and added those to the bottom of that basket of the air fryer. Make sure that they're all even. 
I turned on the air fryer. I am just going to cook those at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. And then when that 10 minutes is up, I took them out and I just gave them a nice shake because they definitely were not brown enough yet. Then I put them back in at the same temperature, but for only five minutes this time. And that is how they came out. And that's actually exactly how I like them. I love it when they're really nice and dark brown in on the outside, but the inside is still like a little bit crunchy. Oh my goodness, they were so good. Next up, we're staying on the simple keto train. I'm taking two pounds of that ground chicken that I get at Walmart. That ground chicken is so good, you guys. It is a leaner cut meat. I like that better than the ground turkey. I love that. I get, I here lately, I've been getting that every time I go to Walmart. It's delicious. But those are the ingredients I'm going to use. I did cut up an entire white onion and I'm using my handy dandy chopper. I love that thing. I got it for Christmas and I absolutely love that gift. So I will leave this in the description box below as well if you guys are interested makes my onion chopping so much better. <laughs> so in that skillet, I just put, that was around a couple tablespoons of avocado oil, and I am going to brown both pounds of that chicken, but I'm also going to throw in there that entire white onion and one tablespoon of garlic, as well as some pepper. And then, I'm, of course, I'm gonna go in with some salt as well. But you know what, this is such a simple, easy thing to make. I mean, even if you have no time to meal prep, pull out a pound or two of ground beef or ground chicken or turkey or whatever, and prepare that, you know, add just some flavoring to it, pair it up with an easy peasy vegetable, and that can make your life just so much easier. So last on the list, we decided to mix up our lasagna that we like to make. This is a brand new lasagna recipe. I've never made this before, but that is two pounds of ground beef that I just browned in that skillet. And that is one entire head of cabbage. Of course, you wanna take the core out of the cabbage and I did wash the cabbage up. Then I'm just going to take it in quarters like that and put it in a large pan full of water. And I'm just gonna boil the cabbage with the lid on until that cabbage is nice and tender. You don't want it to be crunchy or hard. Then while that cabbage softened up, I just finished cooking up the, uh, the ground beef. Again, that is two, actually it's a little over two pounds of ground beef. So I like to add lots and lots of meat to my lasagna. So to get the cabbage to the desired tenderness that I liked, it took around 20 minutes on medium. Then I went ahead and just started adding the rest of the ingredients to the ground beef. So I did add three cups of that Rayo's marinara, but again, like I said, this is a little over two pounds of ground beef. So that's a lot of ground beef to cover. And um, I did go ahead and add a little bit of extra seasonings as well. So I added some pepper, because you guys know me and my seasonings. I added some sea salt, a little bit of oregano. I just wanted to give it even more flavor. I did add some garlic powder as well, I wanted more flavor just because the cabbage itself is going to be a little bit bland. So I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of flavor in the meat mixture. But that's kind of how I left the cabbage just like that. It was pretty much tender enough at that point. I laid it all out on a napkin so that way the napkin could catch as much of the moisture as I could possibly get out of it. I still didn't get it all though. And I even took a napkin as you can see and I kind of patted the tops of it. Um, Cause you'll see at the end, it's still a little bit runny, but you know what? It was so delicious. So I just laid the cabbage at the very bottom of the pan. I did spray my pan pretty well. And then I took half of that meat mixture and I just kind of started layering, just like you would a regular lasagna. And I'm a cottage cheese girl, so I use cottage cheese in my lasagna. Obviously, you can make your fillings as far as your lasagna however you want. And then I added some of that Cheddar Jack cheese. And that's just because that's what I always have on hand. And then I just layered again. So I put two layers of this cabbage lasagna. So I did the cabbage, the meat mixture, 
and then as you see the cottage cheese again and then I did go in with more um, cheese so this time I added mozzarella cheese as well as that cheddar jack cheese so those are just two cheeses that I always have on hand I baked this at 400 degrees just until the top was nice and browned bubbly you know what I didn't think my daughter was gonna like this but oh my goodness she even loved this which shocked the living heck out of me because I didn't think that that would happen because she doesn't like cabbage but it's such a great replacement for noodles if you guys haven't tried this definitely give it a try it keeps it low carb low calorie and delicious and it's much easier than zucchini. All right, y'all, so that is going to conclude this week's meal prep. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys found some recipes to try that you and your family could possibly fall in love with, like myself and my family have. I'm actually already thinking ahead. Next week's meal prep, I am so excited for. So definitely stay tuned for next week's. I already wrote out my meal plan, and oh my goodness, I'm already thinking of next week. But... I hope you guys found some inspiration, motivation, and ideas from this video. I hope you give some of these recipes a try because they are so delicious and they're probably going to be new favorites of your family as well. But like always, I'm going to be praying for you, your family, and your country. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate every single one of you guys. And don't forget to go out there and make today even better than yesterday. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye. On my own, but I don't know why. You hit the road, but you don't realize. I'm on the back when you're around. I'm on the back.